Well, the first one ties back into our first news item. Is this like when it tied back to AIDS? Uh, I don't think so. But um, no. So remember, our first news item was Lauren Bobert's son got arrested. And he's been doing crimes. And everyone in the Bobert family has a um, has a mugshot. Well, on the day that Lauren Bobert's son was arrested... This is the only reason I picked that story, by the way, because I don't fucking care what a teenager did. Like, teenager did stupid thing. Big news. Woo! No big deal. But on the exact day that her teenage son was arrested for doing crimes, Lauren Boebert tweeted this out. The Biden crime family will go down as the most corrupt political family in American history. Meanwhile, the Bobur crime family starting out with crime. Literally a crime family. You can find a mugshot for all of them. It's always projection. Almost 100% of the time. Yeah. It is 50% of the time projection. I just have to keep on changing the percentage every single time so the stats make no sense. Stats never make sense. No, they don't. They make numbers. Yeah. So... This, I, I think this is the first time in Twit Tweets history where I've chosen a news item specifically to make a tweet more funny. <laughs> to be fair, it is a very unique way of going about things as okay. opposed to the usual, this person said something stupid, so we're going to make fun of them. That's it. So two people in my chat said in... They, they said the first person said that age like chunky milk and then Donald said, oh God, is not a good safe word. Um, oh god is not a good safe word but I my brain somehow combined those two messages to chunky milk is not a good safe word and I was like what who is using chunky milk as a safe word because that actually kind of is a good safe word because that's not something you'd ever say Jesus when you're Christ having a good time not safe word oh so um my oldest um you just made a joke at some point and we're like you know what if um if you are what it, like i don't know why like it's stupid teenage humor or whatever but it was like if you are whatever you say after you sneeze then i am jesus christ because like she'll sneeze and then go like jesus christ um but that did remind me of the uh the 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 documentary series kunk on earth have you seen that no i haven't oh my god it's so good you gotta watch it it's it's not like it's a documentary, but it's it's very dry British humor sort of thing. Uh, like, so it's Philomena Kunk, which is not a real name. She's an actress, but um, she's she's going around. And she's um, just saying the most ridiculous things, but with this like completely dry, straight delivery. So like, oh, wait, she, hold on. This is the this is the interviews, right? Yes. So she'll okay, she'll I've do seen, interviews I've with professionals, and it, she'll just ask the dumbest questions, but like with complete deadpan. And it's great. And like one of the things that she does is like Jesus Christ converted from Judaism to carpentry. And it's ironic that he became a carpenter because he was actually named after the two words that you're most likely to, to yell when you hit your thumb with a nail or when you hit your thumb with a hammer. <laughs> so I have now insisted that my child watch Kunk on Earth. Okay, fair enough. And I now recommend I... that everybody watch it because it's fucking hilarious. I've only ever seen clips from it, and I've I've never been dissatisfied with what I've seen yeah, in the clips. No, it's great. I was laughing through the whole thing. It's probably I usually like I laugh mostly at things that are not trying to make you laugh. That is just like bad accidentally. This is one of the first comedy things that have actually made me legitimately laugh intentionally. Like not like, oh, that was so bad that I thought it was funny. I don't know. It was great. Next tweet, case orbs. All right. So first off, we got to read the breaking 911 says uh, AG Garland says that the Biden administration is working to block voter ID requirements because black Americans can't afford identification because there's always administration fees that come with administration or identification. Uh, Kevin Sorbo responds to that by saying, maybe it's just me, but it seems racist to say a group of people aren't smart enough to do something. What? What part That's, of that had anything to do with intelligence? 
it, it, none of that has anything to do with intelligence. It has to do with the fact that we have purposefully set things up in such a way that demographically black places in America, places that have a higher propensity of people who are black, which we have a long history of doing that lead, uh, what was it, redlining? Yes. Where we would we would redline dis, uh, we would redline mm -hmm. districts and not give loans to people on one side of the line, and those loans weren't technically uh, on racial lines, but you know there just happened to be a, ma a makeup of ninety to ninety five percent black people on those lines, so suddenly people couldn't get out of the ghettos and couldn't get houses because they couldn't get loans because they were in a redline district. Anyway, um, the I was, fact that I was just gonna say none of that has anything to do with intelligence. So like saying and, saying that black people have a higher poverty rate than white people doesn't say that black people don't have the intelligence of white people. No, but it led me so but so when the when the BLM protests were going out in full force, I it, it was it almost became a hyperfixation of mine to like study all of the stats behind the the 1350 uh pseudoscience shit. I did a few videos on it. So now like when I get on the topic, it's like a neuron activating in my brain of like, that is wrong for all of these reasons. Bombard with info reasons. Yeah. Well, it's like my, uh, if you go to research.viceround.com, you'll find my bombardment of all the research to do with trans people and showing yeah. how like being trans is real, being trans is okay, being anti-trans actively harms everybody, including yourself. Uh, it, like all like every single objection they have is like, oh, well, here's like a whole list of studies that show that you're wrong. Um, but anyway, I actually, so I actually do have a problem with the statement that like black Americans can't afford identification. Um, so my problem with that statement is not that it's untrue. It's not that it implies that black people are not smart enough to get ID. I don't know. I don't even know how he arrived there. Unless it's like one of those bootstraps things where like, oh, if they were smarter, they would have pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and been richer. But like, I feel like the fact that Kevin Sorbo is like, let's be real, he might be a washed up actor, but he's got more money than me. The fact that Kevin Sorbo is somewhat rich is proof that having lots of money does not mean that you are smart. So the inverse is also true. Having not enough money does not mean you are not smart. Um... But the thing, the problem that I have with this is that when you actually look up poverty levels by racial uh, demographics, um, Native Americans are by far the worst off. So my problem with this is not that it's like denigrating to black people. My problem with this is that it's ignoring Native Americans. So it probably would have been better for them to say something more along the lines of like marginalized groups will have trouble affording these because marginalized groups have his like statistically they just have higher poverty rates. So like yeah. But like that's a fairly minor quibble. It explains more than my info dump though. <laughs> I mean, I would so I I wish that the Democrats would do something like this where they actually put together a bill that required voter ID. However, the voter ID is something that, like you don't pay for it and every citizen is automatically registered to vote and they just receive their voter ID card in the mail or whatever. Um, and the, but because the, the thing is that like and, and you could call it something like the voter ID bill. And then Republicans would vote against it because they don't want something that like is going to register more people to vote and happen automatically and be free and easily accessible to everybody. Um, and like, yeah, there, that's probably a problematic way to put it up. Like, there's probably something I'm not thinking of that would be a big problem with that. But um, like they, they could do something like that that would have a sort of like a voter card or whatever, like not specifically you need some form of government ID. It's just like when you register to vote, you get your voter ID. Oh, and by the way, you're automatically registered to vote. But then the Republicans would vote against that. And then we could all get together and be like, oh, well, the Republicans, like they said they wanted voter ID and now they're voting against it. Although I feel like you don't even need to trick them like that nowadays because like they could have passed a border bill 
But then Trump was like, no, I can't campaign on the border if you fix it before I'm in office. So they killed it. So, like, you don't even need to trick them. They will vote down their own shit. As long as Trump sees that that would be beneficial to him. It's not the smartest voter base, but it is a voter base. Yeah, it's almost like, and, and a lot of Republicans are rich. So, like, it's almost like, it's almost like having lots of money doesn't make you smart. Yeah, yeah. Next up, we get the transformed wife. Who Lori, says, please stop speaking on the internet. Anyway. I, I, there's so much I want to say about this one. I don't know if we have time for everything I want to say about this one. It says, the only place where sex is an expression of love is inside marriage between a husband and his wife. Fornication and adultery are not love. They're lust and using others for your, and using others for your own pleasure. Marry a man who loves you, a man who doesn't want to defraud you and use you, a man who wants to marry you and provide for you. Wait patiently for this. Okay. Uh, what if you can't afford to wait patiently for that? What if you're, you know, just in a relationship with somebody and y'all two both unanimously as adults agree, hey, we should do the sex thing because we both love each other and we don't plan on leaving each other and we don't need a legal document to tell us that we shouldn't at threatening of losing our half our shit to each other. Like, what's... Yeah. So well, I, I fail to see the problem with that. So here's here's my thing. I actually feel like sex outside of marriage is more easily demonstrably an expression of love than one inside marriage. Now, ignoring the homophobic husband and his wife shit that all of these people feel the need to throw in there. Um, because what is it, what just, is so, it just because sex outside of marriage there's less of there feels like less of an obligation for some people? Yeah, like that's, there's a cultural that's kind of what I was getting. So like right now, I am not married to the person who lives with me. We do have sex. Um, <gasps> Scandalous! Know, shocker! Um, Holy shit! So You're here's the thing, in though. Sin. Because we are not married, she can just pick up and leave anytime she wants. There's zero consequences. So I have no financial hold on her. I like I have no hold on her. I have no legal hold on her. Whereas like we have to go through this difficult legal process in order for you to leave me. Um so like she can leave me anytime she wants and there's no consequences. She's just gone. So the fact that there is zero barrier to her leaving means that when she chooses to have sex with me that is because it's a like actual relationship where like there's mutual respect and uh, give and take sort of thing there where we both agree that this is something that we want to do. Whereas in marriage, it, especially if in, in the world that she wants to create where divorce is not a thing, then it becomes a you are legally required to do this sort of thing for me. And if you don't, I will make your life miserable. This is where we get the weird concept of, you know, like there being no such thing as marital rape. I, yeah. a weird, a weird happenstance that happened to me in regards to that. Um, so there was a friend of mine who went into the military. We met playing League of Legends, and that's uh, almost all of our interactions had been online. They got married uh, at some point because it, you know, when you're in the military, it's very hard to keep your partner with you unless you're married. That's yeah. just normally a requirement there. Um, and we so we hadn't talked in years until they got back from active duty. When they got back from active duty years later and we were talking, somehow, uh, oh, the uh, a friend of mine who I had to help with something in regards to their husband uh, assaulting them happened. And I was, you know, mentioning that to them in the, you know, usual catch up of, hey, what have you been doing? Oh, well, I've been dealing with this recently, helping a friend through something. And immediately they just went, but she couldn't have been raped. They were married. Mm. Is it instantaneous response. And like, yeah, no, the I do at the altar is not blanket consent. Like it's, it feels weird when you haven't talked with somebody in a long time and you're like, did our, did our ideologies separate that much in that amount of time? Or did you just change in the military? 
Like, which, which one is it? I don't think I like either answer. See, I don't... I don't understand that. Because, like, there, there are times when I've said no to sex. Then there are times when she's said no to sex. I actually think if you, if you add them up, I've probably said no to her more than she said no to me. Which... Is it because you wanted to yeah. have a turn of the cuck chair? <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's usually because I'm busy working and I don't really have time for that. Because, like... I make sure to take the time to do what is necessary. Um, the cock chair. No, not the cock chair. <laughs> but um, the cock chair while watching Bluey. No, I just like I. I don't understand the concept of being in a relationship where you feel like you can't say no. Like, it's, like to me, is like I don't want to have sex with someone that doesn't want to have sex with me. So like I mean, if it you're not defeats the purpose. Yeah, if you're not into it right now, just tell me and I will stop. And that has happened sometimes. It's like, like okay, ever, I will stop now. Like even as a even as a base thing, have you ever watched porn where one of the people looked thoroughly uninterested and it was just <laughs> free use porn is a thing that I don't know why it started being recommended to me. But like it came up a lot for a little while and it's just like, no, I, I'm not like, why would I be interested in porn where someone is not interested? Because yeah. like that's, that's the whole thing is they're just doing normal things and like to people that are like, like they'll, they'll be having conversations, like there will be three people in the room, only two of them are having sex. And the person who's not having sex is just having some mundane conversation with one of the people that's having sex. And it's just like, that's, that's just weird. Like, that's, yeah, it's not titillating enough to get to threesome level. It's just like, like the person who's having the mundane conversation is not into the sex. I'm just like, eh, no, not my thing. No, it's, it is one of the strangest things. And I don't, I don't want to kink shame anybody who's into it, but I also thoroughly don't understand wanting to either be in a sexual encounter or, you know, through porn, watch a sexual encounter where somebody just didn't want to be there. Not even, not in like a non-con sense, but in a literally, they were just there and participating so, and that's all. In the free use thing, I kind of get it from like, it, it, there might be an exhibitionism thing going on where like it's not so much about the sex itself it's about the fact that i'm having sex in front of someone else and just doing normal stuff in the meantime um but yeah it's just not my thing that i think that's what the thing said you're not kink shaming you're kink asking why sure exactly yeah yeah but th that's but I mean, that's kind of my point in that, like, um, in a marriage, there is more of a sense of obligation there as opposed to a non-marriage. So, like, I, I feel like the sex will be more of an expression of love outside of a marriage than it could be inside a marriage. Just because there is that freedom, like, there is no legal barrier to you waking up in the morning and saying, yeah, no, I choose to not be with you anymore. So I actually have to work to be like. I want to be a good partner to where she wakes up in the morning and says, I actually do like being with him, so I'm going to stay. No, and that's completely reasonable. I don't see anything wrong with that particular mentality. And, and definitely now, not because I'm living I'm also, in a similar situation. Like, I'm also not saying that getting married is a bad thing that will take the love out of your relationship. That's not what I'm saying here. Um... I'm just saying it's not required and in some ways not being married actually like even like even if getting married wouldn't take the love out of the relationship not being married and still choosing to stay together is just more of like an external demonstration of it or whatever which is kind of a weird way of looking at it because most most of the time like the wedding ceremony is supposed to be the external demonstration of love but I'm a weird person. What can I say? The external demonstration of love was spread all on her chest. <laughs> um, no, she doesn't like it on her chest. But, um, yeah, no. Uh, Fennec says, I hear kitchen noises. Yeah, she's right over mm -hmm. there. And I could probably tell you everything that she likes, and she wouldn't care that I'm telling my audience. 
but the audience didn't want to hear that, so I'm going to move on to the next tweet. <laughs> oh, but speaking of which, this guy became the main tweet. Now, I am 90% certain that this guy is a troll, but um, have you heard of Pope Hat's Law of Goats? No, I haven't. Okay, Pope Hat's Law of Goats is... So you, you know Poe's Law, right? Absolutely, like yes. If, if you're being... Like, if you're being a troll, just for the sake of being a troll, sometimes it, like, it can be hard to tell the difference when... That's more that the, the more extreme a position is, the harder it is to tell the true yeah. position from satire. Yeah. Um, so Pope Hat's Law of Goats is related to that, in that if you are a troll who is trolling just for the sake of getting people's reactions, um, the analogy that they use for the law is that if you are someone who fucks a goat just to get a reaction out of people who are grossed out by people fucking goats, it doesn't change the fact that you're a goat fucker. I'm only doing it because it makes the libs mad, though. Yeah, but you still fucked a goat. But um, the libs are mad. Yeah, so that I think that this guy falls under that. Like, he might just be doing this to get the reaction, but he's still telling on himself quite a bit. So I flew says, the Nazi flag so I could troll, bro. Yeah. Um, so he says, eating pussy is part of this mythology of the female penis whereby a man, oh, I saw me, a man this shit. pretends to suck a woman's cock. It's disgusting and beyond belief that this practice has become widespread. Um, now, first off, you have a trans girlfriend, so you do suck a woman's cock sometimes, I would assume. Yes. Yeah, there you go. And if I had a trans girlfriend, I would happily suck my trans girlfriend's cock. Maybe my girlfriend is trans. You don't know. You haven't seen I've... what's between her legs. No, nope, and I don't need to. Yeah. Um, and not it doesn't my matter. Fucking business. doesn't matter. That's my business and her business, not yours. Um, it's your business when you do the business. But also, like, the clit is, objectively speaking, the thing that it's, the it's penis It's a female grows. penis. Yeah. With, with, I mean, the penis is more a male clit than anything, because it starts as a clit and grows into a penis, but mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but then he followed that up with uh, saying clitoral deniers are treated worse than Holocaust deniers in our culture because the clitoris oh is God. essentially the Holocaust of feminism. The, cl the clitoris is the Holocaust the, of feminism the is the clitoris, best quote. I love it. It's so amazing. Oh, my God. The clitoris is the Holocaust of feminism. I just I don't even know what to say to that. That's just amazing. <laughs> But like this is this is what I mean. Like, he's advertising that he doesn't know how to please a woman. Maybe he's just playing a character for the reactions. But like, he's still advertising that he doesn't know how to please a woman. Like, you're still you're still telling on yourself no matter what. I don't understand. Like, I have spoken to enough women to know that men really do sometimes have a hard time finding the clitoris and sometimes might be an underestimate there. It's not fucking hard. It's right fucking there. You just have to care a little bit about the other person's enjoyment. It's and there it is. because there's so many men who think that the way to make your partner happy in bed is to learn how to thrust better. Because that is what they've been taught by the other, largely I mean, men, is, who they spend time with. There is something to be said for getting the right angle. But like yes, that's, but that's, that's not a discussion to is. have with the person that you are penetrating, not with the man telling you to thrust better. Like I don't wanna I don't wanna do a whole segment on my stream that is just sex ed with Cirrus. But there are some times where I feel like it's fucking necessary for some of these people um so if i do a google image search for clitoris diagram do you think we'll get pulled off of the interwebs i think we probably will does uh does twitch allow diagrams i know youtube I, does i i think we should not <laughs> i don't know you want to shut down your stream i'm about i'm about to i'm about to do it Oh my god. Okay, I'm 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 not doing the actual search live because I just I just turned Google. off the zoom. They can't see anything now. Okay. I'm I'm going to try it. It's it's not that explicit. <laughs> it's not that explicit. Mhm. Mm uh so I'm adding it as an image. 
do I will not mix the source visible right away. Do, do, do. There you are. Okay. Okay. This is for my uh, penis havers in the audience who don't have experience finding the pleasure spot. It's that big blue dot at the top. Oh, it's... this one's probably fine. Yeah, that's. It's an I... Easter egg, Twitch bots. Yeah, it's 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 so easy to find. It's right fucking there. Like you just you you part it a little tiny bit, and there's a little nubbin right there. No, he just keeps playing with the hood. That can be fun too. Like because the clitoris is basically a little penis, there's like a whole shaft that's like buried within the folds and stuff there. So if you get a finger on either side and you kind of like go up and down or whatever, that's the, kind of the same as doing this to a dick. It's fun so, to like, play with it when it's it can engorged. be fun. Yeah, but like it's it's <laughs> it's right there. It's so easy to find. Just look for it. Talk to your partner. It's it's okay to be like, hey, what makes you feel good? Tell me what makes you feel good. I'm sure they will be more than happy to be like, this is what makes me feel good. Because, like, most men just don't care or whatever. They just stick it in and they're like, yeah, 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 this feels good to me, so it must feel good to her too or whatever. I don't know. It's not hard. Alt, it's right there. Alt says when it's engorged, it's bigger than me, though. Sounds like a skill issue. There we go. That, that, that sounds like you're a Lilliputian. Gulliver's Travels reference. Nobody. It, Kitsune just said, I just discovered that I've always played with the hood. <laughs> and there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. You know what? Some, and this is where it's important to have communication with your partner because some, for some people, um, it's so sensitive that direct stimulation will be too much. So you want to go through the hood and that's fine. Altfax says that's not a skill issue. Can skill make my dick bigger? Uh, no, but skill can negate the size of it. Fennec got my reference. Thank you. Skill can 100% negate whatever your your qualms are with your own size. Absolutely. 100%. Se Self-confidence in your own ability to perform, communication with your partner on how you perform, and ability to use the tools that you have are infinitely better and more important than size ever could or would be. Yep. And in fact, there are several instances where your size can be a detriment. Yeah, I, I have I have seen porn with men that have extremely large penises where they can't go all the way in because there's not room for it. Like, so suddenly they feels, can't have as much pleasure and they only hurt their to, partner. It feels good to go balls deep. So why would you not want to be able to do that? And like the majority of the uh, of the nerve endings on the interior are within the first three inches. So like, as long as you're three inches or more, you're probably fine. Or as long and as you're willing to use your if, fingers first. Yeah. And even if you're less than that, there's other things you can do that are still probably fine. Whatever. Said, anyway, then it's this, not is, a... this has been sex ed with Rhino and Cirrus. So this is a skill issue. That's a psychological issue. Actually, I think you'll find that even most therapists will tell you most psychology, most psychological issues that are not based purely on mental illness are a thing that can be overcome, making them skill issues. Mm, no, I'm not going to go there. Capturing Christianity says, to prove that people on the internet will argue about literally anything, here's a picture of, of a metaphysical necessary truth. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. All right. First off, like... Yes, this was engagement bait, and people did try to argue with him. Everything Cameron then, does is engagement bait. He argued back with the people, though. Like, he's he's engagement baiting and being like, oh, this is proof that you'll argue about anything. And then he argued about it. So, like, eh, you're kind of, like, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. But also, like, it's not a metaphysically necessary truth. Like, to, to quote Sean Carroll, astrophy, well, sorry, uh, cosmologist who deals a lot with physics. Um, metaphysics must follow our physics. It has to obey the laws of physics, the rules that we understand from physics. They, they don't get to be and, separate. Yeah. And so the thing that physics has taught us is that causality is not as simple as we understand it in our brains that evolved to survive on the plains of Africa. 
I mean, um, what's funny is that the the only reason that our brains even function that way is because the what is called type one thinking, the type one thinking of everything being a linear point A to point B is a survival tactic. The mm -hmm. bush, the bush rattled a predators in the bush. Like that's that is just the survival part of your brain. I mean, the clip might also be in the bush. It's worth investigating. <laughs> Search for it. See if you can part the bush. Um, yeah, but like, but even the, the, the statement, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Okay. First off, that's a composition fallacy when you apply it to the universe as a whole, because like everything within the universe that begins to exist is not the same as the universe as a whole is like begins to exist. What does that even mean within the universe? Usually within the universe, things that we've observed, it's stuff that exists reconfigures to be new stuff. So like, in a Which sense, means nothing has begun to exist yeah, as like, far as we understand it. Yeah, it's components have already existed. And as far as we can tell, it's existed as long as the universe has. We have zero experience with the beginnings of universes. We don't know if causality would work the same way for that as it does for the stuff within the universe. So that's literally a composition fallacy. Um, but also, even within the universe, when you get into when you get down to the quantum level, you see that causality is fucking weird. I'm not even going to pretend to fucking understand it because it is fucking weird. All I know is the minute I found that observation can change something, I stopped looking into it. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> worse stuff like that where like it's not even observation can change something. It's that a cause can come after the effect. There are things in the future that can cause things in the past. Like when you look at the quantum level, that is just a thing that happens sometimes because quantum mechanics is fucking wild. And so like causality does not work the way apologists need it to work in order for this argument to work. So like he's he's just wrong. And then he's posting his wrongness and being like, oh, when you point out that I'm wrong, you're just proving that people will argue about anything because clearly I'm right. And like, this is, this is, he calls himself the intellectual side of Christianity. Like, fuck off with that nonsense. Yeah. No. Oh, Romnipus says Vice didn't react to a joke, drink or something. So that's become a thing on our channel now is when you say something and I just don't respond. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not. It's funny. I'm sure I'll notice when I'm editing. <laughs> Maybe. I'll get a I'll get a WhatsApp message about it at like 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. Hey, by the way, I was doing this and here's why I didn't respond to you. It's not because I ignored you. It's because of X. So Frank Turek says, cancel, cancel culture claims they're fighting for justice, yet they're silencing people who might have a better view on how to be more just. Uh, well, most of the time when Frank Turek talks about being more just, it's like not in favor of fucking gay people or some yeah, shit. Yeah, so... when he says more just, <laughs> it's uh, how can we exclude LGBTQ people from participating in society? That's not more just. He'll say, by whose standard? By not your gods. Because your God's standard fucking sucks. I have to pee. I'll be right back. Welcome to pee. Said, yeah, blame X. It may not be X's fault, but X deserves it. I, I wasn't talking about an X or your X or anybody's X this time, I think. Oh, I just realized that my scaler screwed. Oh, wow, that dumpling in the back is so adorable. The dumpling is adorable, hidden by Vice's head. Can you imagine having to look at Vice's head instead of that dumpling? God, we should actually make Vice Rhino use that VTubing software that lets you change your face and only your face and just make it that dumpling. As he's speaking, it's just perpetually that dumpling. So it's like, I don't have an ex, never uh, never opened a Twitter account. Oh. I mean, to be fair, that is also uh, a proper usage of the, the, the term X. All of those things. So I cashed in my free pizza coupon tonight and got another free pizza coupon. <gasps> pizza sounds really good. 
I shouldn't have pizza. I should make the burgers that I've set out in the fridge, but like, I really want pizza now. I really do. Twitter or Ingress were supposed to call it X now? No. You had pizza for dinner? Yeah, but Stoff, you're like near, you, you like near New York? 90% of your diet is probably different kinds of pizza. At least that's what I would assume. Based solely on location. Pizza. Weird question. Are trans femme furries more often hyenas? I don't think so. I've seen yeah. I've seen a lot of cat girls and a lot of like wolf girls. Not generally specifically furries. Or not generally specifically hyenas. Bernia says pizza all the time. You can't have pizza all the time. Your gallbladder was removed. Ooh, my partner's kids will not like you saying they can't have pizza all the time. Well, your gallbladder wasn't removed, and you can have pizza as much as you want. No, I can't. I would like to not get fat. I mean, I suppose if you limit how many pieces you have, but I don't do that, so... I mean, the the whole reason that I have hummus as a snack right now is so that I don't snack on, like, potato chips. I don't know if the hummus is better than the potato chips. Um, no, it's not. Potato chips are objectively better than hummus because they're potato chips. Oh, 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 okay. You're using a different form of the word better right now. No, I'm, I'm talking about better for health reasons. I'm also using an incorrect reasons. definition of the word objective. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, so Frank Turek says cancel culture claims they're fighting for justice, yet they're silencing people who might have a better view of how to be more just. I just responded to a video of him not too long ago where he complained about being fired for being anti-LGBTQ when in reality he was just not rehired to give like motivational speeches when someone who he was giving the speech to was like, hey... I found out this guy wrote a book all about how gay people are bad and I'm gay. So it makes me feel bad. So maybe don't have him do the speeches anymore. It seems reasonable. Yeah. And also like have a better view on how to be more just like, what the fuck does that even mean? So you and I both know what it means. Yeah, I know. I know. Adju what, a I just know world where all the gay people are burning in hell. Yeah. That's that's what it really means. Yeah, that's not actually justice, though. God's justice is not justice. No, like, not really. That's, that's the thing. They say he's got perfect mercy and perfect justice. Because if you and, and and they always if when they use the courtroom analogy, they always use. Like. Um, let's say like, oh, the judge has you up at the docket or whatever, and um you know, this person comes by and agrees to pay your fine because you got a speeding ticket and he's going to pay your fine. And isn't that so nice or whatever? It's like, okay, well, first off, that's not perfect justice because perfect justice requires that the person who committed the offense pays the penalty for it, not someone else. So that's a suspension of justice, not perfect. Because mercy, by definition, is a suspension of justice. It's saying from, a, uh, the, perspec pr from the perspective of justice... This is what should happen, but I'm going to be lenient with you because I'm having mercy. It's like mercy is literally the suspension of justice. So you cannot be perfectly mercy, you're per perfectly merciful and perfectly just. But then on top of that, they always use a monetary fine punishment or whatever. Like they never go with something like murder. That's because the wages of sin of death, don't you know? Okay, so let's let's make it equivalent. Let's make it a death penalty case. Let's make it a capital murder. Like I have murdered someone by planning it out in advance. Like I, I had a very detailed plan, worked it out, was very meticulous in carrying it out, and murdered someone. Um I'm in a death penalty state. They're seeking the death penalty because I'm so cold and calculated and callous. But then the judge's son gets up you know, on the stand and says, hey, this guy's my friend. Let him go free 
and I'll let you punish me for a weekend. Well, just not the, the weekend. Not the whole weekend, like the most of the weekend, but like I still get most of Sunday <laughs> and like a good chunk of Friday. It's just most of the weekend. Is that justice? Absolutely not. But that's Christianity. Like, according to them, Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven enjoying eternal paradise, while some of Jeffrey Dahmer's murder victims and rape victims are burning in hell forever for dying in their sins. That's not justice. I don't know what's going on in my chat, but somebody just quoted the, the song is just six words long. I like that song. I don't know either. You don't know that song? No, I don't actually. Was well, it's um it's a parody of the I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set on But because that song is so repetitive, you just turn it into the song is just six words long. And I like it. Anyway, we got more Nick, Frank Turek. Why do we have to have two of them? You know what? I'll take this it. It's not case of It's Frankie. Yeah, we only got one of him. Uh, he says, leftists believe they are infallible and nobody else can have an opinion. If you disagree with them, you need to shut up. That will not bring anyone to the truth. I don't know um, that many leftists that believe that. Most people believe that they've come to that conclusion or they came to that conclusion after being on the right for a while because they grew up in conservative households. So they recognize their fallibility most of the time. Yeah, I was going to I was just going to ask, like, which side is the side that's asking to ban books that disagree with them? I'd also say from personal experience, I've had a, a friend of mine who is conservative literally say the words, no, my worldview is objectively correct. And I haven't heard that for most of my friends on the left. So well, just... I mean, I mean, when you look at his last tweet, like, oh, I've got a better view on how to be more just. Meanwhile, nobody else is allowed to have an opinion. Um... Also, like, which side is the side trying to ban pride flags? You can't have pride flags in hell like, or something. Yeah, they're, they're banning books. They're banning pride flags. They're trying to ban, like, uh, they're trying to ban drag shows. Like, they're trying it, to ban all these things that are clearly covered by the First Amendment. They want to ban things. That make them feel icky. And that's it. That is the end-all be-all of 99% of all of these arguments. They don't want to admit that that's the be-all, end-all, the 99% of all those arguments, because it makes it sound illogical and childish as fuck, well, but... But it is illogical and childish as fuck. Yeah, it is in fact that. So, you know, what, what are you going to do but call a horse a horse and a spade a spade? I don't know. Drew says, I will say that I've chatted and left his Twitch chats and the minute. Right. So, but there's a difference between the general population consensus and a YouTube chat or a Twitch chat online. So yeah. we people have, are we have cultivated, more... we have cultivated a very specific audience here. If you come into either of our chats and start spewing transphobic nonsense, you are going to be shut down very quickly because we have cultivated an audience that is very much pro trans rights, very, in favor of that but that's not yeah. un it is unfortunately not representative of the general population although the general population is also not the anti-trans bigots that the right wing would have you believe either where they're the silent majority or whatever the fuck yeah like i know that in um so from from personal experience no matter who's no matter which streamer chat you go in, for the most part, the opinion of whomever that streamer is is going to be what a lot of the viewers hold because mm -hmm. that is, that, that's, that's the audiences we tend to circle around in as human beings. We tend to flock to flock. Yeah. Um, and because of that, when you say something in an engaged space, you're lighting a fire no matter what you're saying if it is outside of the opinion of that engaged space. If yeah. I say something pro-trans uh, over on Nick Fuentes' channel, there's probably going to be at least 1,500 instances of the F slur thrown at me very, very quickly. Yep. 
And th so that is a consistent thing you'll find in online community spaces, no matter what. But when I go out into the wild and talk with people, which I've made several videos on my channel that are literally just titled, go outside, please, I beg of you. <laughs> when I go outside and talk with people, Typically, most of the arrogance stems from one of two types of people, the people who either spend so much time online that it doesn't matter what their political ideology is, their their personality is arguing with people. That's what they do in their spare time. Yeah. Or it's been a lot of people on the right who believe that we're burrowing tunnels under Jewish citadels to try to do something, getting kids uh, trafficked down there or something like that, typically. Like, those are the people I find that tend to be arrogant because they will never back up the things they say with any actual evidence, but they will very proudly say it over and over again. And having argued with those people in real life, their typical tactic when you show that they are wrong on something is to move the goalposts on you as opposed to admit, oh, I guess I was wrong on the one thing. I'm sorry about that. Thank you for the correction. That doesn't tend to happen. It tends to be, well, what about this thing? And it moves further and further down. Yeah. And I wish that wasn't my general experience with these kinds of people. But it has been my general experience going out into the wild and talking with them in Atlanta and the other cities that I frequent that I don't want to name for risk of doxing. Yeah. Oh, that's I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. My uh, my chat window froze for a sec. Um, oh. Chat window like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, no, I, I tried to. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Drew Harrison said I often get called a pedo on Quora just because I support trans people. Yeah, I have I have been called a pedophile so many times on Twitter just for yep. for pointing out the fact that allowing kids to have access to educational resources that explain what grooming is objectively reduces their risk of falling prey to like to actual groomers. Like Having educated kids protects kids. I point that out, and the response is, oh, you're a pedophile who wants to groom kids. Like, no, I'm trying to protect them by having them educated. And it's just, it's sad. And do you think that people will ever stop falling for what about the children arguments? No. I, I don't know, because, like, that, that's the thing. Like, protecting children is a very, very strong evolutionary driving force. Like, we got to protect the kids. But the problem is that, like, what is seen as protecting kids is subject to manipulation. And so, like, you get the anti-abortion crowd. They legitimately think that being anti-abortion will protect the kids, even though objectively that is not the case. Anti-trans people will think that they are protecting the kids when objectively speaking like i in research for a video today i came across a study that was pointing out that um kids who are pressured it like kids who are pressured into exhibiting a certain gender expression before the age of 10 are significantly more likely to attempt suicide at some time in their life than anyone who's waited till after 10 before they experience that sort of pressure and like that hits fucking hard for me because I have more than one kid that is under 10 now you that can is see experiencing your own, that. Yeah, you can see your own kids in it. And yeah. it's, like, it's like the reason that it's harder for me to read news articles about what's going on in terms of like what Republicans are doing to the trans community over and over and over again. Or like when Brianna J was murdered, why it was hard for me to cover that story more than once when the trial happened. And I didn't even go through the conclusion of the trial because I was like, no, this is too much. Because when I'm reading that kind of stuff, I can't not see Saki in it now. Um, yeah, so uh, Donald's saying my granddaughter came out as trans at age six. Um, I think I'm okay to say this. Our, our youngest might be trans she is she's four so like it's an age where like yeah when you get when you when you talk to older trans people like when i say older here i mean like more mature not necessarily like old people but like um 
when you talk to mature trans people, oftentimes they'll be able to tell you, yeah, I knew that I was not the right gender when I was very, very young. Um, but she's also four. She pretends she's a fruit bat sometimes. So like, is she trans? Could be, could also not be the safe. The, the best thing for her is to allow her to explore that for herself at this point. Figure, figure it out yourself. Support whichever decision ends up getting made. Yeah. Like um, that's a, the, the typical good thing for a parent to do in most situations turns out actually. Yeah. And, but, and, and this is where I really struggle because like, I, I read that where like, if you're pressured into changing your gender identity before the age of 10, that significantly increases your risk of attempting suicide. Her dad is very much like, oh no, you're just trying to make her trans. Like, no, we're trying to let her express herself and you doing what you do is putting her fucking life at risk. And that makes me so fucking angry. And, oh, it's just, I forget how we even got yeah. here, but I'm just like, like See, I, I just, I like, I want to protect the kids. Oh, okay, this is where I was getting at was that her dad, like, I have no doubt that he wants to protect her as well. But because he's been like he's fallen prey to this like nonsense bullshit about how people are trying to trans the kids instead of just letting her express herself and explore her gender identity on her own. He's he thinks that we are trying to make her trans when it's like, no, she came to that decision on her own. She told us like if it was up to us, I would rather that she'd be cis and her dad accept her for who she is but that just does not appear to be the case at this point. Now, like if she comes back later and is like, oh yeah, no, I was actually wrong there. I'm actually a boy still. Then be like, okay, great. I'm glad you had that. I, I'm glad you had the freedom to explore that and make that decision for yourself instead of being forced into it. And reminds me. So before the, before the topic got dire uh, on both of our accounts for similar reasons, I was going to make a joke about Alan Cummings' portrayal uh, in Reefer Madness, if you've ever seen the Reefer Madness musical. I have not. Um, is Alan Cummings... I, I feel like I know that name. He played... Uh, he played the villain in the second version... Or in The Mask? Yeah, he played the villain in The Mask. Um, He's a very, very funny actor. But he plays the villain in Reefer Madness as well. And the beginning of that musical. Yeah, wait, musical? Yes, the Reefer Madness musical with Alan Cumming as the opening act. It is my favorite musical of all time. And the beginning of it is Alan Cumming trying to convince uh, a group of parents that marijuana will turn them into zombies and start the apocalypse because of communism. I've I've seen the like 1950s black and white reefer madness thing. I've not seen any of the redos of it. Well, like, was it done as a joke? Oh, it's a, it's a musical satire. Okay. It is it is entirely making fun of the premise of the original reefer madness. Okay, cuz the original reefer madness is fucking hilarious, but for all the wrong reasons. This one's hilarious for all of the right reasons. Okay. It is and it it I love musicals to begin with, so it didn't help at all that this was the musical that my drama teacher introduced me to when I was in high school. So when you <laughs> when you said Alan Cumming, I was um, I pictured Alan Armstrong, and I was like, is he talking about the guy who played Tenardi in the tenth anniversary of Les Misérables? No, but no, I was wrong. But that's who I thought of. See the kids. I'm just like he is not a funny man. He's kind of a serious guy. <laughs> Wait, uh, Twitch chat, I have a question. Did the ads get worse when I turned off the ads on Twitch? Because I turned them off, at least I opted out of the ads incentive program, hoping that that would lower the amount of ads. Did they get worse? Because if that's yeah. the case, fuck. Yeah, I, I have long stopped trying to figure out. Because like, I, okay. Spreaker is the service that I use to get my podcast out there. Um, Spreaker just 
open up this thing where people can support me directly on Spreaker by giving me money. But they won't tell me what the benefits for the people is for that. Like, yeah, they're like, oh, well, you can do like members only streams or members only episodes or whatever. I'm like, okay, yeah, but I'm not doing any of that shit. Like, what do they get aside from that? And they just don't say like, do you still get the auto ads if you're paying me directly? There's no indication. So I would assume that, yes, they're still getting auto ads. So what the fuck is the point in going on Spreaker? Go to fucking Patreon or whatever. You get it ad free on Patreon. Same thing with YouTube. Like, um, I have mem like my videos now go live for members um, as soon as I'm finished them, which you know, sometimes like is it's usually the Monday. Like my Friday video, you'll have access to it on the Monday, maybe Tuesday if I'm running late. Um, sometimes it's the Friday, so like when the video goes public, you get the next video as well. Um, but I don't know whether members still see ads. And I fucking hate that I don't know that. Like, why can these companies not just tell me what benefits I am giving my people when they give me money? Like, I would like my people to not have ads if they're paying me directly. Because, like, their view from an ad is less than a penny. But if they're paying me directly, it's significantly more than that. So, like, I would happy, happily give up that fraction of a penny in exchange for significantly more than a fraction of a penny yeah blarging says that if you turn off the ads all you're doing is giving twitch full control over the ads then i yeah fucking okay then i guess what i'm gonna do instead is i'll go into the ads incentive program since twitch is literally not giving me a choice they've made the viewing experience worse because i decided to take the pay cut of not taking the ads revenue uh, so I guess I will opt into the program and then lower the amount of ads to as much as I can. Yeah. That's that's why I actually I actually used to have a uh, whole channel that was just Vice Rhino unlisted, that I would just send the unlisted links to th my patrons. But then YouTube did that stupid thing where it's like, oh, even if you're not an affiliate or like even if you turn off ads, we're still going to advertise on your shit. We're just going to keep all the money instead of sharing it with you. Um so then when Patreon was like, yeah, we do video now, too. I was like, OK, great. Fucking amazing. My patrons will no longer have to sit through ads. It's like they don't pay me to watch ads. Why does it have orange? And that includes my baked in ads, by the way. My patrons do not have to listen to me talk about Surfshark. There. I have changed it to the where there should only be. And y'all are going to have to help on this one. But I have changed it now to where there should only be 30 seconds of ads every hour. That, <laughs> so, that is as low as I can set it, and I'm hoping that that fixes the, the stupid-ass experience I, that they decided to put through. So Diehard Anime Otaku says, uh, I keep getting Turning Points USA ads on both your guys' videos. That's a good thing, because none of our audience is going to be stupid enough to fall for Turning Points USA ads, and that means that they are wasting their money giving like giving us money for ads that are not going to be effective so like i'm i'm okay with that i will take their money council of geeks did make a good video though on why it is still a good idea to go through and filter the ads on every channel or on on your channel yeah so i that... it's it's because you can only do it by category at least on youtube i don't it might be different on twitch i haven't really looked but like i have explicitly said do not do political ads do not do for some reason, advertisements for illegal products is a category that you can allow or disallow. I'm like, I'm just going to say no to that. Um, I also said no gambling. But then again, like the people that are going to be advertising in the categories that I've said no to are the kind of unscrupulous people that are likely to mislabel their own ads. So I'm not sure how effective that is. said illegal products what the fuck illegal products would be something like cannabis so they'd be like so in georgia oh, is it really that's what that's what it that's what it's in reference to because remember that youtube oh, i thought it was more along the lines of those sketchy things like bitcoin scams we're like oh send me all your bitcoin or whatever or like pyramid schemes or something like that no it's going to be more about like drugs and illicit content because oh. well then i almost that... want to say yes to that because like yeah. because that kind of stuff is not the same across uh, countries and across states. Okay, I almost want to say yes to that then, because like, yeah, 
You smoke the weed. It's, hel it's healthier than alcohol, which is legal in all 50 states. For now. Yeah. We'll go back and we'll we'll get it illegalized again. It's fine. Sure. It worked well last yeah, once, time. Once women start using alcohol as a way of inducing abortion, then we'll start to see regulation on it. That's how that works, right? 110%. Uh, okay, now that I've depressed it again, we go to the racist tweet. Alcohol um, is a depressant. It is, yes. Uh, <laughs> so there was a video where Whoopi Goldberg said Joe Biden could throw all Republicans in jail, in jail and dismiss all claims. You come and try, we'll have some fun. Um, I watched the clip for this. I didn't download the quick clip because it wasn't necessary. It was, what, what Whoopi Goldberg said, and they included in the clip, in the clip, by the way, I was actually surprised that they kept the context in and it was enough context to see how ridiculous they were being. She was, she was explicitly saying... If Donald Trump's legal arguments actually work, then what that means is that Joe Biden can now throw all Republicans in jail and not face any legal consequences. And then she said right after that, and that is a very like the audience started applauding and she turned to the audience and was like, no, that's a bad thing. And they posted that as if Whoopi Goldberg said a bad thing there. It's like, no, she's pointing out how hypocritical that argument is, how dangerous that argument is. And how, how much you don't want that. But then Asian Dawn here posted it saying, come and try it, you ape-looking Klingon she-man. I've got 91,000 rounds. So that's that's racist as fuck. Mm -hmm. And I reported that, and you and Twitter came back with like, oh, yeah, we didn't find that they violated anything. You know, well, calling, of course, because calling Twitter black, doesn't... <laughs> yeah, calling a black woman an ape-looking Klingon she-man is definitely not violating our... You know the the policy that we have against you know promoting racist tropes and stereotypes or whatever. Yeah, it's and, and oh yeah, and also threatening to kill her. Basically, like I've got ninety one thousand rounds. That's not very subtle. No, but yes, yeah, Twitter not. Twitter explicitly told me that they found no problem with this. So, yeah, fuck Twitter. No that place boy. Shit show. Like I have actually. I feel like I'm at a point where if Twit Tweets wasn't a show that I did, I would have no problem just putting down Twitter and being like, nope, never again. Oh, speaking of which, if you are on Twitter still and you use the app, uh, look into how to turn off the calling thing, because now anyone that you follow or follows you, I forget the specifics, but like they can just call you now. And like, fuck that. Yeah. Thankfully, I don't use the app because I actually have I have, a, I have an extension on Chrome that um, will hide all the Twitter blue posts. So like whenever, like if, if somebody with Twitter blue posts, unless it's someone that I follow, the, uh, it just hides it the same as if you've blocked the person. Like it doesn't actually block them. It just shows it as if they've blocked, been blocked. And it's great. It makes the Twitter experience much more usable. But um, yeah, I it it's not compatible with the app, so I just go through a I go through a browser on my phone, so I don't use the app. So when they rolled out that thing where anybody can call you, I'm like, well, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, because they can't really do that if you're just on the app. Yeah, so don't use the app. Definitely don't use the app. Probably just don't use Twitter. Like, I understand that there are some communities that are on Twitter where it's hard to get them to go elsewhere or all agree to go somewhere elsewhere. Um, I get that. I understand there are still reasons to use Twitter, but like, don't definitely don't use the app. Like, I actually have two different browsers on my phone installed so that like one is the browser that I use for Twitter and the other one is my browser for browsing. So like there is a way to do it as if Twitter is still the app. So like for the convenience factor, you don't need the app. And like, it's just, I, I don't trust Twitter as a company with installing anything on my phone. If you wouldn't trust Elon with installing shit on your phone, why would you trust him with installing shit in your brain? I mean, how many of the monkeys died from burns from it? Like, fuck, how did that even pass muster for human trials at this point? Because he's got lots of money. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to end on a... We're going to end on a stupid note. Tim Pool says it should be illegal not to believe in God. Like, aside from the blatant First Amendment violation, do you really think you can legislate belief? 
Like you, so, you can't legislate me into being convinced that Christianity is true. Unfortunately, and this this goes with the pose law thing. The uh, you know, it, there's yeah. only so many times you can you can fuck a goat to make the libs mad before you're just the goat fucker. Um, so unfortunately, Tim made a post on Twitter about I want to say six months ago now. It, it was some time ago. Um, actually, it was probably a year ago now. Saying that Ooh. he was going to turn all of his tweets into uh parody tweets or not, and he didn't. He wouldn't ever say which ones were which, just okay. to see which ones would make people more mad. This so. Pose law. At some point, we just have to accept that everything you're saying is you being an insane, batshit, dumb person. Yeah. So Abyss uh, sent 250 bits. Says first time watching the stream, but love your YouTube content. Thank you, Abyss. Um, yeah. No. Uh, Tim Pool definitely falls into the you fucked a goat. Doesn't matter if you did it ironically. You still <laughs> fucked a goat category of people um this actually kind of made me think of uh, armored skeptic is a lot like i've been getting a handful of people trying to defend when i did uh, my response to his moon landing video there have been a handful of people defending him being like oh well he he explicitly said in this video that is not anywhere close to like there's not even a hint that this video is related to this kind of content whatsoever um where he said that he's going to be playing a character or whatever and you know, he's trying to pull a trick on people to see how many people he can get to believe that he's actually believing these conspiracies. But like at some point, you're I, just the one spreading the conspiracies. Like, I'm not an armored skeptic fan who has watched all his content, but I've done a much deeper of a dive than your average YouTuber who like YouTube watcher who will like just watch one or two videos from a person, maybe subscribe, probably not watch everything. It's like, let's be real. Most people don't watch every single video from every channel they're subscribed to. Um, but like, I actually went looking for him explaining that it was him being a character because that was the first, like when I tweeted about it, somebody commented that and was like, okay, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to see if I can find him saying that he's just being a character and I couldn't find it. And eventually I found something that was like, I could kind of see how this maybe might be interpreted as him saying that he's going to play a character, but it's not like explicitly stated. Um, but apparently there was another one that I missed somewhere that wasn't even remotely associated with the, uh, the group of videos that I was looking at where he explained how like him promoting conspiracy theories was actually him setting a trap to make some point in the distant future about something. I was like, no, no, no. If you make this many videos promoting conspiracy theories uncritically, and those are the only videos that get views anymore, and you seem to just be chasing those, dudes, you may as well just fuck the goat. You you just fuck the goat. Sure, you're trying to do it to prove that other people will be like, ha ha, that guy fucked a goat. But like, you still fucked a goat. Yeah, at a certain point, we just have to accept that you will be the person saying batshit crazy things. Yeah, and I don't, you're not supposed to take it seriously, but it's all you're saying now. Well, and that's the thing with him, though, because like so much of the moon landing video was stuff that like that is debunkable with less than five seconds of Googling. Like, it's such an easy thing to debunk. And so I'm like, is this him like just making points that are so obviously bad that that's him? Like, that's the hint that it's all satire. But at the same time, you go back and you're like, um, you, you brought it up before where the um, there was the H-Bomber guy video where um, like someone was anti-trans or whatever. And then he was, he just like kind of leaned into the microphone and was like, yes, while well, the pro-trans studies and papers were scrolling past. That was in response to Armored Skeptic. That was an Armored Skeptic video. Mm -hmm. um, and like I found the clip for that and was like, yeah, no, Greg did not do even so much as a cursory Google, he just said there is no evidence as if that was a, a definitive fact and left it at that when five seconds of Googling would have proved him wrong. He then deleted or privated that video showing that like he recognized that he did something wrong or he just didn't like the backlash. Um, but it's like, here was him being sincere and he didn't bother to do a Google search for this very easily debunkable point. And here's him doing the moon landing video where his points are easily debunkable with a five second Google search. So is that him 
throwing a bone dust to like that's a hint that it's satire because it can be debunked so easily or is that just him displaying the same laziness that he displays in other things when like he thinks something is true and he doesn't put critical thought into it bill nye like, made him angry for yeah. being right <laughs> but like i can't tell so i'm just going to assume that he's being sincere because you're fucking a goat on camera man whether you're fucking it ironically or not you're still fucking a goat This one's not going to be monetized. I've said goat fucking way too many times. <laughs> no, it will be monetized because you're way more lucky with that than I am. Sometimes. Yeah, I, I am weird. Okay, the stream itself won't be monetized, but every single clip from the stream will be monetized, which like Me I, I don't understand how that happens, but it does. Every video upload that I put in the last uh, 48 hours have all been demonetized, and it feels weird. No, all, <laughs> all, of, all of my streams are demonetized, but when, the, when I... Uh, cut the streams up into little chunks and upload them, all the chunks are monetized. So it's like, what part of it was demonetizable? But then people don't really watch the streams on their own, so I'm not really... It was just a bot it. looking through it? Yeah. Like, I probably could just have them review it, but whatever. I don't know. Anyway, that's the last tweet. So, um... Yeah, we're, uh, we're a little bit late tonight, so, uh, yeah. Uh, God help you, because I can't. Is that what I say now? I forget. Who fucking cares? I don't even know. My uh, my stream deck looks different. There's your stream deck looks different. I I uh, had a bunch of stuff set up for last week, but I deleted them now, and so now there's all these empty spaces that I'm not used to. So I have to find my credits button. So uh, uh, fuck off or whatever. I hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep the show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here. And they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagittarius, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.